Duke Two Nation. Me and Vin TV, aka Me TV, aka the Fixer, aka the Mechanic. Because that's right, we're going to fix Capcom today. Now, understand, guys, that today's video is by fan request from people from Capcom community and just people from YouTube asking me, Vin, how would you fix Capcom? That's what this is about today. So, I will say that today, it, like I said, strictly my opinion, there is no, you know, this is the end all be all. You know, you, I've said this time and time again. I don't think I need to keep saying it. But look, if you don't like the video, I would love to see you make a video for yourself saying, you know, how you would fix Capcom in detail. Now, mind you, it only took me an hour to write this stuff down on how I would fix Capcom. So today you're going to hear a lot of my, my Capcom. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of that, all right? Because like I said, this is what if. I was in charge of Capcom, all right? So let's get into this real quick. Now, we're going, first we're gonna start off with how to fix Capcom business-wise, all right? So first off, if I was in charge of Capcom, the first thing I'd do is start with firings. That's right, laying people, taking people off. The first person that would be fired or relieved of their position would be Sven. That's right, Sven, gone, all right? For everybody who knows what Sven has done, you know, especially seeing what he does on Capcom community page, it is absolutely ridiculous, okay? And that's not professional. He would be gone in my Capcom. Now, I would say Seth Killian, he would be demoted, not fired, all right? Only because he has tried to help in the past when it comes to games, all right? However, I feel he's not a good negotiator when it comes to localizing games. That's just me, okay? Like I said, these are just my opinions. Also, firings, pay trolls, you'd be fired. That's right. I know you'd be. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. You'd be out of a job. I can always recommend you to EA though. So I mean, I'm gonna point this. It's a waste of money. It could go to quality games or for the infrastructure of new business practices. That's where that money can go instead of paying you to play the defense force. Look, if I'm running Capcom, I don't need a defense force. Okay, I just don't. It's not part of gaming. It never has been part of gaming, as far as I'm concerned. And I, I would want the company to prove their worth by the quality of their products. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Forum moderators would be relieved their position, and it wouldn't be all of them, because there are some good moderators over at Capcom Community, but there's a lot of yes men over there, and you know what? Can't have that. They would be gone, and I'll put like this, you, you, I'll put like this, I wouldn't want yes men because, do you see how, I'll put like this, example, have you seen Michael Jordan and Charlotte Bobcats? Exactly. All yes men, and you see where that goes. I would see personally to it, you know, to hire certain mods who have a good head on their shoulders, all right? Also, for employees. You would get better benefits, and you would get better HR. You would, you would get great human resources. I mean, we've seen too much of this in the past. Too many developers have left, uh, left Capcom because of management. Now, we just saw last week a person try to kill themselves because they were being bullied. Yeah, we can't have that in my Capcom. And co companies in general should not have that. Uh, you know, those type of people You know, being bullied and trying to kill themselves. That's ridiculous, all right? Also, here we go. Capcom blog would be shut down when it comes commentary-wise. That's right. It's time to move on to the future. We don't do any more blog posts and screenshots. No, 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 no. What we'd be doing is video. You can always do video with screenshots and stuff in it. I need people who can sit in front of the camera and tell it like it is. That's what it would be. That's what Capcom blog would be about. It would just be video postings, all right? Now, I'm gonna talk about the business aspect real quick because for those who don't know, Capcom, first thing I would do is Capcom's real retail stores. For those who don't know, they're in, they're in Japan, all right? And it's actual bar slash retail store. What they do is you can go there and you can drink and you can buy items at Capcom store. I would expand that store, those stores, I'm sorry, those stores with multiple arcade and gamer lounges, you know, to add on to those so that people can play, you know, why they drink. It's that simple. And you know what, as far as I'm concerned, every time, it would have an expansion, I'll put like this, for every lounge. So depending on what you focus on game-wise, there would be a lounge for it. For those who have not seen the retail store that Capcom has in Japan, check this out. Now I want to move on and talk convention panels. That would be the next order of business I would do in Capcom. Now, I will talk about this because convention panels will be changed, all right? There will be no more paying a lot of money, you know, for premium time slots for, you know, that hour to do their Q&As. No, 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 no. Instead, I would save more money, and check this out, with a larger booth, right? And then at a regular time slot. So will you be there for a longer time slot? I and my staff will be taking the fans' questions and concerns. My staff will be made up of reps, myself, reps, and developers. That's right. And we would be taking notes. That's right. You would be talking to these guys face-to-face. -face. You wouldn't be sitting, you know, in the distance with developers, you know, speaking on, you know, on, on a stage. No, 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 no. You would actually be face-to-face -to -face with these guys. You can shake their hands. You can talk to them and, and voice your concerns. That's what it would be about. And developers would not be pulling these type of stunts as well. So this time, uh, do you have $10 bills in your wallet? <laughs> 今年は皆さん10ドル札を掲げて僕に写真を撮らせてください。So uh, no jokes, if you have a $10 bill, hold it up. 
on the sign will take a picture. We'll show this to the president back home. Yeah, the more the more tenors we see or twenties, uh, the the more likely we are to get this game made. Absolutely ridiculous. Like the translator says, Ono is very serious. What he is doing is the train seal effect. He's trying to get gamers to eat out of the palm of his hand with the promise of something to come. That's what he's doing. All right. I swear, if I had a you know a, a sound bite with seals, I'd have done that. And gamers, you should you should know better than that. You really should have more respect for yourself than to have some guy tell you all in unison to put up dollar, you know, ten dollar bills or twenty dollar bills, so he can take pictures, so the suits can be like, oh my god, this money be made. You know, that is absolutely ridiculous. All right. Now I want to move on because that brings us to my next thing. Developers would have to take media training courses. That's right. No more arrogance. No more disrespecting, you know, customers. Like I said, every time you disrespect a customer, that's a possibly, uh, possibly lost sale. Okay, and that's not what the company would want. Now, I will say this, you're representing the company, so no more talk. You're representing my Capcom. Understand that. That's not how we want to be portrayed. You notice every time something bad happens, when it comes to the media, when they, you know, online journalists, gaming journalists, write something, it's, oh, this company pulled the Capcom, or this company pulled the EA. Yeah, don't want to be, you know, associated with that at all. Now, I'm going to talk about some games here, all right? Because as Capcom, what I would do is all games will be made in-house. That's right, first party. And the quality devs that Capcom had in the past would have partnering contracts on a game by game basis. All right, that's what I would do, just to keep the peace, you know? Now, a number of you are probably saying, why would you do this? For a number of reasons. First off, outsourcing games to pander to a certain region has to stop. Has to, all right? No more monkey see, monkey do. You have to focus and fix the core, which is in home, before you can branch out. We all know this. You fix what's at home first before you try to take on the world. At the same time, this would create jobs, it would raise stocks, and boost morale within the company, okay? Now, I want to move on because I want to talk about actual games. And I want to start off with the fighting game community because, you know, contrary to popular belief, you know, a lot. Of, I see a lot of people online say, oh, the fighting game community isn't that important and everything. I beg to differ, all right? If you have noticed, most Capcom games in this generation, they have made a ton of money off what? Fighting games. We've seen it time and time again, all right? So spare me, the fighting game community is not that big. I'm not trying to hear it, okay? So I'm going to start with you guys first. First off, we're going to talk tournaments. That's right. Tournaments would no longer have cash prizes. So if you're only in it for the money, see it, all right? You have to understand, you will be playing for trophies, titles, scholarships, and jobs. That's right, because I put it like this. If you're that good at the game, I want you on my side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you would be going to school to learn, that's right, game programming, as well as being paid to come into Capcom HQ and work with developers. That's how I would do things. Now, from a business standpoint, I want to talk about this. If I'm giving you free schooling and paying you, you would have to sign a contract saying you wouldn't do anything stupid. And what I mean by that, I'm talking, you know, trying to rig beefs and all, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you have to you have to sign that you would not act a fool if, if I'm sponsoring you. I'm giving you all this free stuff and paying you, okay? Now, I'll put it like this. If you agree to those terms and you act up, everything is taken away from you. Tro trophies, titles, I mean everything. You would have to reimburse Capcom. That's right, for the money spent in your schooling and you know and learning from developers, and you would be blacklisted from all tournaments, all future tournaments, I should say. And before you say, well, how is that possible? Why would you do that? Best believe. Capcom, my Capcom, would be involved in all tournaments, every fighting tournament, and understand this, all right? There will also be a standard attire you would have to wear. Like I said, because in social scenes, in conventions, I would have you wear something like this. Of course, with the Capcom crest on it, and when you go to these tournaments and you represent Capcom, you'd wear a warm-up top like one of these. Of course, with the Capcom crest on it as well. Look, if you're going to do it, do it big. It's that simple. Organization, structure, that's what you need. If you want to, I'll put it like this. If you're also a team captain, you get the captain's armband. If you want to become a professional gamer, guess what? I will treat you like a professional. That's simple. All right? Now, I want to put like this because we need more ambassadors for fighting games and less smart-ass punks. You all know what I'm talking about. This would help both sides. Listen to this, all right? Because... As it helps the future for fighting games and adds more revenue from my Capcom. That's what it comes down to. Also understand the fighting game genre would not be the only tournament held by Capcom. Or sponsored, I should say, by Capcom. It wouldn't just be fighting games as well. Alright, so I'll point like this. Would you tell me you would you would throw away the opportunity for free schooling and a job and be able to learn how games work? And hopefully by the time you're done, you'll be able to make your own games. 
and all you have to do is not act a fool and wear a suit every once in a while? You gonna tell me you wouldn't take that? All right, anyways, let's keep going. All right, let's talk about the actual games. Street Fighter, start Street Fighter. We'll be taking a much needed rest. All right, to focus on other genres. Now understand fighting fans, don't worry. All right, you'd still get your fighting games because as far as I'm concerned, fighting games do make up the market, but the time frame would take longer, all right? Fighting games make up the market when it comes to Capcom right now. I mean, let's be honest there, all right? <sighs> but this is what you'll see. You know, you'll see a longer development time so you won't get burned out on the games that you already have. The genre won't become oversaturated unless other companies try to oversaturate it. It won't be on us. You get what I'm saying? So, here are the games that I would bring back for you fighting fans, all right? First off, you would get Tech Romancer. That's right. Plasma Sword, Star Gladiator, you would get that. You get JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, right? You would get Fate Unlimited Codes. This is, I'm telling you, this will be big time tournaments. I will, and while you're playing those games, I will be trying to work with DC and Marvel for a crossover, okay? That's not all. Another crossover I would try to work with because Darkstalkers, I understand Darkstalkers is getting ready to be made, but as far as I'm concerned, I would not make Darkstalkers on a standalone. What I would do is first test the market even better, and I'll put it like this. I would try to acquire the rights to Killer Instinct to make a Killer Instinct versus Darkstalkers game with two different me uh, mechanics. That's right, so you can play in whatever gameplay you want, deciding how, you, you know, how you'd fare in it. So that's how I would do things, all right? Now, also, I want to talk about DLC. DLC for all fighting games made during regular production would be in-game unlockables, okay? Anything after regular production will cost $5 a character. Now, I know you're saying, what? $5 a character? Let me explain. That would include the character, the color palettes, because I'll be damned if you have to pay for color palettes, all right? Multiple costumes, right? A theme stage. They get their own stage. Also, the OST, the original soundtrack that you would be able to download. All that for $5. That's what you would get, okay? Now... I need to talk to you brawler and beat em up fans, alright? First off, all you brawler guys and beat em ups, you get HD remakes, okay? Now, first one I would start off is with Power Stone. You would get, what was it? It would be brought to all platforms with online play. And so with the following games Captain Commando, Knights of the Round, King of Dragons, Spawn the Demon's Hand, Armored Warriors, and Saturday Night Slam Masters. Those would be your games that you would get, guys. And mind you, this would be like, there'd be HD remakes, but these would come to the PSN. And there's a reason, or and Xbox Live, and the Wii. There's a reason why I'm doing this, all right? Now, side-scrolling games. I gotta talk to you guys for a minute, all right? I would start by enrolling these games into the Play, Share, Create program, like how Sony has. That's right. And I'll play this because Ghost and Goblins would be the first to be, you know, to be brought out. It would get a new game. And I'll put like this. If you're going to do it right, because we all know how hard at one point Super Ghost and Goblins was. But could you imagine if it had crazy level design like Little Big Planet?
Could you imagine Arthur and get this, Maximo? Could you imagine playing in stages like that on top of Ghost and Goblins difficulty? Could you imagine that? I'm just saying that would work. And these are also games that will be greenlit as well, all right? Three Wonders, Alien vs. Predator, Tiger Road, Trojan, Punisher, the arcade game, if anyone remembers that, all right? And last but not least, Strider. That's right. Now, I need to talk to you guys, all you tabletop guys, you shoot regular shooters, side scrolling shooters, I need to talk to you because I play like this. You guys would get high difficulty. Every one of those games would have high difficulty, and you know what I'm talking about. We're talking all types of stuff on screen, all right? I play like this. First game that will be made, Section Z. That's right. UN Squadron, Carrier Air Wings, Legendary Wings, 1943. Volgus, that's right, I know a lot of you guys don't say Volgus. Why Volgus? Because Volgus deserves more credit than it gets. It was Capcom's first game ever made. It deserves more credit, all right? Also, I would try to acquire the rights. Check this out, because we already have Gigaway, right? Capcom. But I would try to acquire the rights so that we can work on a crossover between Gigawing and Radiant Silver Gun. I'm just saying that's what I would do, all right? Also, all games would have four-player co-op, local, uh, local multiplayer, and no always online DRM. Understand that, guys. Now... I'm probably asking, you know, why would I do this for a couple of reasons. I said I had some reasons I would do this for HD remakes. This would open up genres that many companies are not focused on right now. All right? That's what it would do. The HD remakes would tell me if they're worth venturing out to new sequels. Okay? It would slow down production so you would have more time to make quality AAA games. It would give you a breather. It would give you a break. All right? Instead of speeding up production like Capcom has already reported they want to do, you know, with a ton of glitches at release only to be patched later. No, no, no. Take your time. These games would give you breathing room. That's what it would come down to. Now, I want to talk about this because in my Capcom, not only would all these things work, but also understand I'm cornering the market as well. Understand that, all right, with these moves. You're making more money instead of relying on four to five titles to get you by. That's what it comes down to. There's so many verse, ga uh, verse games these days that it needs to be balanced out with co-op, if you get what I'm saying. Now, Ace Attorney fans, all right? I know you guys have been you know, complaining about you want it to be localized too. I would localize it, all right? But there's two ways I would go about it if I was you know, in charge here. First, you could release it before the movie comes out you know, to tie it in. You could do that, you know, because as for those who don't know, uh, Phoenix Wright, the Ace Attorney movie, will be getting a worldwide release, all right? You can do it before to tie it into the movie, or what I would do is wait a couple months after the movie has been released and then bundle the movie with the game. Either way, you guys would get what you want and it would be localized, okay? Now, Monster Hunter fans, I need to talk to you for a minute, all right? First off, you would get a lot of support from my Capcom. You get a lot of support. Monster Hunter is a great game, all right? But what do I mean by this? You have to understand, in Europe, in Japan, in other regions, Monster Hunter is a phenomenon. You have to say, it's almost like a culture on its own. It is huge. They're, they've made Monster, Hunters, ca Monster Hunter cafes just for the game, all right? So understand, Monster Hunter is a huge success in other places. However, that success, I feel, can be brought over to other regions with the right uh, advertising. That's the problem. Capcom has not spent enough money on Monster Hunter. They just have it, but it needs to step its game up and gameplay for a little bit. And I'm gonna give you an example. First off, first example you should know by now. When you're playing online, monsters warping. They'll be in front of you. All of a sudden, they're over there and they're over there. Monsters warping has to be addressed. I'm not trying to hear, oh, it's just your online. No, this has happened from Monster Hunter One up to now. It's still a problem. All right, it is. When you play, it needs to be addressed. Now, also, getting rid of weapons and monsters every time a new game is released. No, you don't do that. You build on top of what you already have. You give them more variety. You already hear fans already saying, Monster Hunter tried it and have a lot of content. This, this is how you keep the content going, all right? Because you get a lot more. Now, I want to talk about this because for those who don't know for the PSP, Monster Hunter already gets free DLC, all right? Gets free DLC, I would keep it that way, but then I would let gamers create their own arena battles and missions. Understand, you get free DLC, but there could be so much more that could be done with it. So what gamers would have to do in order to use certain monsters in created content, you would have to beat that monster first. You would have to in order to be able to use them in an arena or in a mission, okay? Now, I'm gonna talk about this because cheating in Monster Hunter, unacceptable, can't have it. For those who don't know how cheating is, it's so bad if you've ever played with someone who's hacked their game and just decides to join your game and then you see how bad, you know, how pretty much how overpowered they are and then you kick them out. Since the time is recorded, your stats are already tracked. If you, you will be pretty much permanently, uh, permanently banned from the game. That's what I would do, all right? No way should you be beating high score g rank monsters, all right, in three moves with your weapon. No way, all right? Learn to play the game like everyone else. That's all you got to do, all right? Cheating is unacceptable for Monster Hunter, all right?
Now, I do want to put it like this. Uh, I got to talk Devil May Cry real quick because, like I said, I wasn't going to talk Devil May Cry and Resident Evil. I'm not talking Resident Evil in this because it has a standalone video. Devil May Cry, I'm not going to talk Devil May Cry, you know, gameplay wise in this because they have a standalone, uh, I have a standalone series for that, all right? This is just a question, though, business wise, what I have done to the uh, fan backlash for Devil May Cry, and I will answer this. This is the only thing you're going to get from me with Devil May Cry, okay? Guys, because the guy says, if you did a standalone video, how would you, uh, you know, on running Capcom, I'd like to know how you would have handled the situations with Ninja Theory and Tamim insulting fans of Devil May Cry who didn't and still don't like his fan fiction DMC. Okay, this is what I would have done first. First off, I would have told Tamim, keep your mouth shut. That's what I would have said. All right, I, you already know, I already said developers would have went for media training and things of that nature. I would have told Tamim, just keep quiet. All right, I'll put it like this. I wouldn't want devel uh, developers representing my company trashing customers. All right. Because, like I said, it, it, that doesn't work, all right? And if a gaming journalist kept pressing to me at the time that it happened, I would just instruct him, you either say no comment or just walk away completely. If they have a problem with that, they can come talk to Capcom, my Capcom, you get what I'm saying? So, secondly, as Capcom, I would have come out and said, you know, we wanted to go in a different direction. It's not Ninja Theory's fault. They're only following our wishes. That would have took the pressure off Ninja Theory. You get what I'm saying? That's what would have happened. But Capcom didn't do that, no. What did Capcom do? They decided to let it go and let those guys, to meme and outs, act a fool, and then what happened? Capcom later comes out and says, you know, we didn't expect this type of backlash. Only to later backtrack and say, we did expect this type of backlash. That's lying to customers, all right? That's what it is. And I put like this, there is no room for lying in my Capcom. There's just not. No room for snakes either. This is why Sven, would, he would be gone, all right? You have to understand that. My Capcom would be built off loyalty, pride, passion, truth, and quality. I want my people around me to be happy. Happy employees make better products. It's that simple, all right? But it seems like companies these days run away from that. And, you know, I don't, you know, it just, it just seems that companies like to surround themselves with suckers these days. That's what it is, all right? And pointless drama and, and keep you distracted from what's actually going on. Why? Just make the, I'll like this, if you're a great company, a gaming company, you pride yourself off the quality of your work. That's what you do. And it seems like these days we don't get that. But let's keep going. Speaking of quality of work, Onimusha would be greenlit. That's right. You'd get a new Onimusha by now. And if you had, I'll put like this. If you really had to put multiplayer in it, I don't want tacked on multiplayer. But if you're going to put multiplayer in it, you put co-op in it, and you bring back characters from the past. You know, like we saw in one Onimusha, you had Jean Reno in it. So I would love to have seen that come back in the past. It would be a great thing. Now. I need to move on to my last order of business, which is you Mega Man fans. That's right, Mega Man Legends. First off, let me say now, Mega Man Universe would have been out already in my Capcom. It would have been greenlit for some, you know, to get you guys by until Mega Man Legends 3 was released. And yes, I would release Mega Man Legends 3, but understand this. I would charge a standalone, just the game by itself, I would charge $40 for it, right? And then I would make a collector's edition that would be $60. That's right, you're saying, wow, that's a big jump for $60. What's going on, man? Why would you charge so much? Because the $60 collector's edition would have Mega Man Legends 1 and 2 in the game with their soundtracks. That's right. That's what a collector's edition should be about. So you want to tell me you wouldn't spend an extra $20 for all three games? If you already have the, the previous two games, then guess what? Then you just paid the $40. But for those who want the collector's edition, I think that's very fair. All right? So fans, with speeding with Capcom already, you know, announcing and you know really that they're speeding up production you should know this is microwave gaming at this point that's all it is all right tons of bugs and patches being put into your games you know what i mean some even at day one when you buy them as soon as you open up the box so i have to ask you why are you why are you so complacent you know what the real question i should ask you is why are you selling for less